Hi, this is Nolan from Benchmark, and in today's video, I'm gonna be giving you guys a crash course on how to set up your new RTK Basin Rover system. Now, I'm gonna be using the Hemisphere S631 and Field Genius to do this, but this is pretty much universal for any RTK system and any RTK software. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to set up your base, how to get your tripod, tri rack, and receiver going, and then I'm gonna show you how to connect up to your rover and take your first survey point. So let's get into the base setup and see exactly what you need. So the first thing I'm gonna be doing here, as mentioned, is setting up my base. So what I'm gonna need before I get started is I'm gonna need a tripod, I'm gonna need a tri -brack, a tri -brack puck, a pole, and then unsurprisingly, my receiver. I'll be grabbing my data collector here in a second when we go to get it set up, but let's first get our tripod set up. So the first thing we need to do for our base setup is get our tripod set up. Now, there are two ways that you can set up a base and we should probably consider it before we get our tripod set in the ground. And that is there are two options for your base setup. There is a known position setup and there is an unknown position setup. Now, those sound exactly like you are thinking. A known position is a point on the ground with known coordinates. Now, you can have known geodetic, which is a latitude and longitude coordinate, or you can have a known local coordinate, which is your northing and easting. And for the vast majority of points, you're probably going to have the latter of that, the local coordinates with northing and easting. So, those are your two options. Now, which one should you use in the field? Personally, I pretty much always prefer prefer for a first day setup, so the first time I'm setting up my equipment, to use an unknown or average position. And I'll link to a video somewhere in the screen here where Kayla talks about which of these setups is best for you. But for my video today, we're gonna be doing an unknown point setup. And that means that I don't need to know the coordinates of where my point is. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna set my tripod over somewhere that's reasonably level. There are no obstructions nearby, so I'm away from buildings, I'm away from power lines, I'm away from trees. It's as open as I can possibly get. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to pull out my tripod and give it some elevation because the higher I get my base the better my results are going to be here so get my base set up what I like to do is kind of get the legs out, use these clamps to kind of hold them roughly in place, and I'll leave the screw clamps till I really get the legs in. And then once I've got it set up here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna step on each tripod leg to really drive it into the ground. And the reason we wanna do that is we do not want these tripod legs slipping at all. If they slip in any manner, shape, or form, I'm gonna have to reset my base up because it's gonna change my results at the rover. So it's really important that your tripod is nice and secure before you proceed. So once I've got that kind of driven in the ground. I'm going to try to roughly get this level here so that I have something to work with with my tri -brack. So once I've kind of got it roughly eyeball level here, I'm going to kind of lock this in place for now and I'm going to grab my tri -brack. Now what I like to do is I actually like to leave my little tri -brack adapter off the tri -brack for right now and that's because it makes it a little easier to set my base on it once I have this on here. So what I'll then do is take my tri -brack and screw it into my tripod. Now you're not going to want to tighten this down really quickly because what you can do is there's an eyepiece on your tri -brack and you can use that eyepiece to level over a point on the ground. And what that allows you to do is if you ever plan to return to the survey site, you can put a nail down on the ground and that means when you return to site, you're going to be able to set up over the exact same point. And the reason you want to do that is RTK is a relative positioning method. So if you do not set up over the same point, day to day your results will differ slightly. So I've got a video on it. We talk about base setups we talk about some of the mistakes. That's one of the most common ones people do. So I always recommend if you're doing an unknown point setup, throw a nail on the ground. So if you ever come back to site, you can set up over that same point. So what I'm gonna do here, I've got a nail on the ground. I'm gonna set up over said point and then tighten my tri -brack to the tripod. Now, with that set up here, I'm gonna come back and grab my base now. And now what I'm gonna need to do is A, ensure that I've got my batteries inside the receiver and that they're charged. And once I have these in place here, the final step before I turn my receiver on is make sure I grab my antenna, because that's the last thing you want to do is we get at least one person a week calling saying, hey, Nolan, hey, David, my receivers aren't working. I should probably also grab my extension pole, that will help. But hey, my receivers aren't working and I can't figure out why. They're not getting radio, they're not getting a fix. And without fail, at least once you'll forget your antenna. So always remember to do a little check before you turn your receiver on. You'll help avoid some of that grief there. So I'm gonna get my receiver set on here and while it's booting up what I'm going to do is make sure that my tri 
is level. So there's three screws here. You wanna get it so that your tri brack is level on the tripod. You might have to adjust your tripod a little bit to get that in the case, but you wanna make sure it's on that bullseye or it will not be centered over your point. So I've got my tri brack leveled here. The last thing I'm gonna do is just tighten my tripod, make sure everything is nice and steady. Double check that I am still level and that I'm still over my point here. Everything looks good. So my receiver started up. Now what I need to do is actually set this up to begin the base broadcast here. So I'm gonna grab my tablet and get it ready to go. So I'm gonna boot up Field Genius here and begin my project. So I'm assuming that you already have a project set up. So if you don't know how to do your project, we're gonna to link to a video right here. It's gonna walk you through exactly how to get it set up. So you got the right coordinate system, you've got the right geoid or ellipsoid, and make sure that you're gonna be surveying in the right coordinate system, because if you're in the wrong spot, this next step's going to be quite difficult. Okay, so we've got our base set up. We've got Field Genius loaded. The first thing that we're gonna do is click on Select Instrument. Now, you can see here I have some profiles previously set up, but let's say, like you, I'm getting this ready for the first time out of the box. What I need to do is click on Add Profile, and I'm going to click on my GNSS reference. That is my base setup, and I'm gonna make sure that my make and model are set to my proper receiver. So I am using Hemisphere S631 in this video. So I'm gonna make sure my make is Hemisphere, my model is S631, and I also always like to have a profile name that is something like Hemisphere S631 base, so it's a little easier to find it later on, or if I give it to somebody who's not as experienced, they know what they are doing as well. So I'm gonna have my name, mic, model all set here and click on Create, and now I'm going to need to initialize my Bluetooth connection to my base. So what I'm gonna do is make sure my communication is set to Bluetooth here and click on search. That's going to look for all nearby Bluetooth devices. Now you can see I have a device here that's D and then a whole bunch of numbers ending in 011. If you see a device with a name that starts with a D, it's probably your Hemisphere S631, but you can make sure you're connecting to the right receiver by looking on the bottom. There's a serial number underneath the power button here. If you see that and it matches what you see on the data collector, you're going to select it and hit connect. And if you've done this correctly, what you'll see on your receiver is the Bluetooth light turning on. If you don't see that light and it's on your rover, you've connected to the wrong receiver, make sure you connect to the right one because there's nothing worse than setting up your rover as your base and your base is your rover and trying to survey backwards. You're not gonna have a great time. But once the Bluetooth connection is enabled here, you're gonna click on setup tolerance. Now for our base tolerance, it actually really doesn't make a huge difference. I leave it as the default setting, so a minimum satellites of five, a PDOP of four, and an elevation mask of 10 degrees. And once I have that, I'm gonna click on OK. That's more than fine for your base station. Now, a very important thing to do here is measure your antenna height. If you really care about elevation, you need to make sure this is bang on. So we've got a nice video here on screen where you can see David measuring the HI and specifically the slant height of our receiver. And what you want to do is you want to measure from the point to the kind of triangle notch on the side of the receiver there. Now I measured mine to be around 1.6 meters. So I'm going to enter in my 1.623 that I measured and click on OK. Now with my antenna height set, there's two steps left here, and the first of those is to set up our reference position. As I mentioned, there are two setup options. There's your known position setup, and then there is your average point or your unknown position setup. Now, as I said, I wanna do an unknown point setup. I wanna do an average position. So instead of clicking known, I'm gonna click on observe and take a measurement of points here. So right now, with an autonomous solution, I have about a half meter of accuracy on my base station. That's more than sufficient for an average position setup. So what I'm gonna do is click on start and it's gonna average that position and we're gonna get something slightly better than that half meter accuracy I mentioned. And what your base is effectively doing while I'm letting this average its position is it's selecting a point that you can almost think of as it's kind of random within that circle. Now, if you're doing a relative survey, that's not a big deal. But if you're doing something that needs to be tied into local coordinates, you're gonna to wanna to consider doing either a known point setup or doing a local transformation with your rover. And we're gonna have a video 
video showing you exactly how to do that coming out. So make sure you hit the follow button on our YouTube channel here or go check out Survey Assistant where we have all of our how-to guides and courses available totally for free. So that's survey-assistant.com. It's down in the description down below. Now, what I personally like to do when I'm doing an unknown point setup is I like to take around 45 to 60 points. Anything more than that, you're not gonna see any huge returns in accuracy. And anything less than that, you're gonna see a bit more drift on your position. So somewhere in that ballpark is generally good for an unknown point setup. And once I have it set, I'm gonna click on stop and done to save my reference position. Now I always recommend saving your base point because if you need to come back to site later, you're gonna wanna have that point. So what I'm gonna do is I always like to just give my point a name of base when it is my base position to make it really easy to find in my database. But click on save here. Now the final step that I need to take here is I need to set up my corrections. So with a basin rover, there are two ways you can do it. You can either do it through cell via Stormcaster. David has a lovely explanation video that you can go watch if you're interested in that. Or what you can do is use your UHF radio, which is probably what most of you will be doing. So I'm gonna make sure my option here for RTK via radio is set and go to set up communication. Now, your radio should already be set up out of the box. So you, all you need to do here is make sure your device is set to UHF radio module and your device port to internal. With those two options, you're gonna be able to begin your UHF broadcast. So with those two set here, I'm gonna click on done and then make sure my correction format is set to the latest RTCM3 MSM. For pretty much any RTK receiver, that is going to be your best and optimal option for your base. So make sure you have that set. If you have anything less like CMR or CMR Plus, you're gonna see a significant degradation of performance at your rover. So it's really important you get that step correct. Now with my correction format properly set here, what I'm going to do is click on start transmitting to begin my broadcast. And if everything has gone correctly, what we should be able to see here is the radio light blinking. So you can see here, the satellite light and the radio light are now blinking. That is perfect. That means your base has been set up correctly. So with that done here, I'm gonna click done and I've finished the first step of this, which is my base setup. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna transition over to our rover and see what parts we need to make this work properly. Now for our rover, it's a bit simpler. We just need a data collector. We're gonna wanna pull some sort of clamp for our data collector and then the receiver. So let's get our receiver set up here. So I'm gonna pull out my 631. I'm gonna throw in a pair of batteries here. And just like my base, I need to ensure that I do have a UHF antenna ready to go. If I don't have my UHF antenna attached to my rover, I'm not gonna be able to get much surveying done because I'm gonna get no range out of my internal radio here. So once I've got it connected on, then turn on your receiver. It's a good first check to make sure you don't forget it. So with my receiver turning on here, let's connect it to the pole. And I'm gonna give you guys a tip here. I always recommend screwing the pole into the receiver. Don't try to turn the receiver onto the pole because at the end of the day, if you drop your pole, it's not as big of a deal as dropping the receiver. These receivers are rated for a two meter pole drop, but there's no need to put wear and tear on it. You could break the antenna with a drop. You could crack something. You could drop a battery. Just avoid it by making sure you screw the receiver into the pole and not the other way around. So with my receiver attached here, I'm now gonna put my data collector onto the pole. And now what I'm gonna do is begin my setup for the rover here. So again, I'm gonna click on add profile, select my make here as the hemisphere. Just again, you're gonna make sure it matches your receiver. This guide is universal for any receiver that you got here and click on create. So just like my base, we're gonna do pretty much the exact same thing. So we're first gonna make sure we got a Bluetooth connection to our receiver here. My serial number on this one ends in 039. So I'm going to connect to that. And what we're gonna see here is my Bluetooth light is now enabled on my receiver. So I know that's working well here. Okay, so I've got my Bluetooth connection initialized. My next step here is going to be to set up my UHF correction. So I'm gonna click on setup corrections and go to RTK via radio. With that selected, I'm gonna go to my setup communication. And just like my base, I'm gonna make sure my device is set to UHF radio module and my device port to 
internal. With that set here, I'm gonna click on done and go to my setup correction format. Now with my Rover, it's a little bit easier. I'm just gonna to wanna to make sure my message format is set to auto detect. That means it's going to sense what my base is broadcasting and automatically choose that message type. So I'm gonna click on done here and continue. Now, what you will hopefully see once you've configured your radio is that the radio light is going to begin to flash. All right, so we've got our radio successfully set up and we can tell that because our radio light is now blinking. So if your radio light's not blinking at your rover here, you've got something wrong. You either need to check and make sure your base light is still blinking or go consult the three most common problems that we see in RTK setups because it's probably one of those that is causing your issues here. Now, with it set up properly, my next step here is just like the base, I need to set up my antenna height. Now with the rovers, it's real easy to measure your antenna height because a lot of these have graduated poles. I know my pole is at 1.80 meters to the bottom of my antenna mount. So I'm just gonna set that in here and click on okay. Now it's really important to get this correct because if this is incorrect, your tilt sensor is not gonna give you a proper measurement. So make sure, make sure, make sure you get this proper before you proceed on to survey. Now, the final step is to set up our active tolerance. Now, I prefer to use this RTK topo, especially for the work I'm doing now. It gives me an observation count of three and some kind of looser standard deviations, which is good for some basic pickup work. But if you're gonna be working in a more difficult environment, maybe switch over to that control tolerance or edit the tolerance to whatever your requirements are. And again, We've got a guide on survey assistance, so go check it out over there. Now, with my tolerance set here, I'm actually ready to begin surveying. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on done, which is gonna bring me back to my main menu. And now I can actually begin to record some points. So on the map screen here, you're gonna notice one thing in the top right corner, and that is that my initialize IMU, my IMU is showing a red X, and that means my tilt sensor is not calibrated. So to calibrate your tilt sensor, all you need to do is rock your receiver back and forth like this, with your point on the ground, your point's gonna stay steady and you're almost gonna do it like a hammer, rotate it 90 degrees or so. And after about 10 seconds, if I close this, you're gonna see I now got a green check mark and I can take tilt corrected shots without having to worry about it. So let's actually go show you what I would do to record my first point. So let's say I'm doing a basic pickup of some of this complex here and I'm going to record a point. What I'm gonna do here is let's say I'm starting at this, kind of where these pavers meet the sidewalk. I'm gonna put my pole down I'm gonna get my tilt in there so I'm right in the corner. And then all I need to do here is click on RTK fixed and it's going to allow me to record my points. You're seeing I've got a tilt. I've now taken my observations and because of the way I have my tolerance set up, it's auto recording my point. And there you go. That's all you need to do to set up your base, to set up your rover and start surveying right away. And for more guides like this on how to keep surveying simple, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel or go check out Survey Assistant where we've got courses on how to get surveying right away.